there are three things which are constant in our life expenses taxes and yes interchangeable lenses if you're someone like me who has one or either more than one interchangeable lens cameras you would be obviously on a lookout for lenses or acquiring them or trying to you know optimize your kits now as i keep traveling and using different type of lenses for my travel photography as well as my food photography sometimes even sports photography that i try to do i always am look out for lenses which are actually a little bit lighter and in that category this 18 to 50 millimeters f 2.8 sigma perfectly fits in especially with my a6700 the reason being is because my a6700 aps-c sensor has a 1.5x crop so the 18 to 50 millimeters f 2.8 roughly translates to 27 millimeters to 75 millimeters of uh, focal distance which is one of the most used overused and very perfect focal distance for a lot of photography and videography that people actually use and even i love it i love the you know the 20 to 70 range in this case it's not 20 to 70 it's like 27 millimeters to maybe you know 75 millimeters of range so be it but the compact size to try to get that is something that i love sigma for if you have not seen or bought a sigma 28 to 70 millimeters f 2.8 for a full frame equivalent you are really missing out a very good lens in your lens kit now i did sell mine off because i was buying the tamron 11 to 20 millimeters f 2.8 but then i couldn't stop myself and having gas i bought the sigma 18 to 50 millimeters f 2.8 so this effectively gives me the same focal length very close by you know few millimeters here and there and f 2.8 and it's for my APS-C camera I can always use it on my a7 mark 4 in an APS-C mode well this is what is there in the box obviously you have a lot of uh, paper uh, and uh, some uh, warranty cards and stuff I would normally keep them aside nothing much to you know do with them apart from you know registering for warranty which you should do and here you go this is the lens Ta -da! if i open this up you have the uh, lens hood in the packaging and the lens itself both are in just simple plastic covers as usual for the filter system for this lens is uh, the diameter is 55 millimeters so i've bought myself by default a hoya 55 millimeters ux filter I normally use Hoya. This video is not sponsored by Hoya or Sigma or Sori or any of these guys. This video is actually sponsored by y'all. If you can give a like to it, uh, subscribe to it, it'll be absolutely awesome. If you want to give any feedback in terms of comments, you're very much welcome. Uh, try to keep it positive in the chat, guys. It'll be really helpful. And uh, jokes are always welcome, even if they're sarcastic. This lens is completely bought by my own coin. I have paid it by myself. Obviously, I'm going to have Amazon affiliate links below. If the gear that I'm actually sharing is useful to you and you would like to use them, please do note that I'll be getting a small amount of commission with no additional cost to you. Having said the necessary health hazard warning, so this is how the lens is actually going to look like. It's just amazing, man, just amazing. It's so lightweight. It's designed in 2021, so it's 0 to 1. I'm also amazed looking at it because I had to wait for more than two and a half months to just get this lens. I was literally on the waiting list for two and a half months. The minimum focusing distance for this lens is 0.21 meters. And the max, that is at the narrow end of 50 millimeters, is 0.3 meters. 0.3 meters is nothing, that's 300 mm. 300 mm of focusing distance is very small distance. I'll be doing a very detailed focusing test for actually this particular lens. So please do subscribe to my channel to watch out for them and also press the bell icon so that you get notifications whenever I post new videos. This is made in Japan, so no wonder it's actually say, taking some time to be you know, pushed out. Now, interestingly, the lettering on the hood is changed from being you know, white. It's now actually a little bit 
embossed into it in black color. It's made in Japan, 18 to 50 millimeters f1.8 DCD and lens. It's also available in Yelmo. So if you're having a Lumix S9 or any of the Yell mount uh, cameras like a Lumix G52 or G52X, this is an excellent companion for those type of cameras. It is having an O-ring here. So this is metal. So that means that, you know, this is a little bit weatherproofed or weather resistant kind of a lens. Let me go ahead and mount it on my A6700. Got to just align the white dots. Uh, that's all it is. And then just give it a good twist. And there you go. And this is how it's going to look being mounted on my A6700. Very compact. If you ask me, my 11 to 20 millimeters Tamron f2.8 is slightly thicker than this and a little bit, you know, longer than this. But then from this is 18 millimeters, this is 24, this is 28, this is 35, and this is all the way 50. So if you are actually uh, using a gimbal to go ahead and balance the A6700 with the 18 to 50 millimeters f2.8 lens from Sigma, it's always advisable for you to go ahead and balance it around 35 millimeters. So that you know whether you're at 50 or you're actually at 18 you not see much of an imbalance on your gimbal now it has two rings the front one as you can see is changing your focal distance from 18 to 50 the second one is the focus ring if you're using it in the automatic mode obviously you don't need to use the focus ring at all but in case if you are using it in a manual mode then you can go ahead and utilize the focus ring up there uh, let me just switch it on for the first time after mounting this lens and try to see if I can snap some photographs. Now this monkey is not that far away at 18 millimeters. I'm at f2.8 and that's the image. That's how it looks like. Obviously I'm an auto ISO because I really don't want to mess around with things. Just I want to snap, snap, snap. You know, if I change it to 24, this is how it looks like. Change it to 28. This is how it looks like. And if I change it to 35, focus, focus. So at 35, it's not focusing at this distance. Now let me tell you what this distance is. I'm going to use my trusty tape that I normally measure all my woodwork and stuff that I try to do. This is 200 mm, that's 0.2 meters. Now if I put it in front of the subject, so this is where the sensor is in the camera, A6700. This is where my subject is. And that subject is just 200 mm away. If you see from the end of the lens, if I do it roughly like this, it's roughly around 120 mm away, roughly 12 centimeters away. That's where it's not able to focus. But if I put it at 28 millimeters, it can focus even at 120 millimeters away. Now for 35, I'm going to just move the subject a little bit back by 50 mm. And there you go, it focuses right on the eye. Now, this is the distance, you know, 300 mm between where the camera sensor is going to be and where the object is going to be. If I go ahead and put it just adjacent to my camera like this, this is where my lens sensor is going to be and that's where the subject is. That is roughly 300 mm. I mean, I might be off by, you know, 10 to 15 mm, I'm fine with that. But then I go ahead and it actually focuses and takes a picture. Amazing, amazing. You know, this is a lens which you can take and run around your kids. This is a lens that you can take to a birthday party. This is a lens you can go ahead and take to a restaurant. You can shoot your entire group of friends or family having food, but at the same time, take some awesome images of the food that you're going to have and post it on Instagram or any of the social media accounts you're having. It's a very good lens when it comes to even video. You know, it's not really hunting a lot from a, a video standpoint of view for focus. It's not making a lot of noise for focus. And it's happy to go ahead and always focus very quick. Please do comment below if you'd like to see an autofocus test. I'm going to make a very detailed autofocus test for this lens because I just love it as I'm looking at it for the first time. And it's really worth my two months of wait that I've actually done and hopefully when I put it through the paces it really passes. If you want to see something specific with respect to the autofocus of this lens along with the A6700 please do comment below. All in all I'm very very happy with my purchase. 
a lens which only cost me roughly around 650 Australian dollars does so well in both video as well as photo conditions is really really cool and it's so lightweight in fact I hardly feel it on my A6700 you know there is no much shift in the grip of my A6700 when compared to my 11 to 20 millimeters f2.8 from Tamron I need to little bit watch out for it I can't be careless but then with this maybe I can get away with a little bit being careless but I don't want to be because this is a lens that you wait too much to get one I hope Sigma improves their uh, supply chains. I hope you guys sell more lenses because these are really, really wonderful lenses to actually own and operate. I can definitely recommend this to anyone who's looking at travel photography, just uh, photography for your own family and friends, or even food photography. Beautiful lens to actually own and utilize. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, peace.